carrying on having a look at different ways that we can display data, we're going to start having a look at cumulative frequency graphs and percentiles. So percentiles means that the value of which a certain percentage of data lies beneath or above. Usually when you get asked for the percentile in a question, that means that you're looking for the amount of data beneath that value. So in our example, we have the height of 80 plants were measured and we can see here in our cumulative frequency table the values. So the first step that we have to do is complete the cumulative frequency table. That means that as we've moved down these values, we need to add them up. This table here is actually incorrect. As this is now a cumulative frequency table, they should all start from zero. So that should be from zero to 20, from zero to 30, from zero to 40, from zero to 50, and from zero to 60. So now at the end of the first category, we have two. At the end of the second category, we have two plus five, which gives us seven. At the end of the third category, we had two plus five plus 19, which gives us 26. At the end of the third category, we have two plus five plus 19 plus 38, which gives us 64. The end of the next category, two plus five plus 19 plus 38 plus 13, which gives us 77. And then at the end category, adding them all up together, we end up with 80. And here it told us in the question that we had 80 plants. So yes, that is correct. Remember that in the exam, you have your calculator, so you can just use the normal calculator function in your calculator to help you to add them up. So next, we are having to draw the cumulative frequency diagram. It's very important to remember that when you draw the cumulative frequency diagram, you put, plot the points at the end of the intervals. So to begin with, because we knew that each of the intervals started at zero when we did our cumulative frequency, because the first interval started at zero, that means our first point is going to be at zero, zero. Then when we get to 10, our first number was two. Each square going up is worth one. So our first point at 10 is going to be there at two. Next, at 20, we were up to 7, so that's 5, 6, 7. Next, at 30, we were up to 26. At 40, we were up to 64. At 50, we were up to 77. And then at 60, we were up to 80. Now it's very important here that you are careful. You won't always go up to the top of your graph when you're plotting these points. So always read across and plot the points accordingly. So next, we have to draw a line connecting these points together, and that line is going to be a curve. Okay, so I've just paused it and drawn the line in. It is quite tricky to do to make it so that you have a very smooth curve, looks like an elongated S shape that passes through all the points. I strongly suggest making sure that you do this in pencil whenever you're asked to do this, just because it can take a few attempts to make it so that it is a smooth curve that passes through the points. Drawing the graph is very important, making sure it's the right shape, because we are now going to use this graph to read our values, and if it is quite far off, then our values are going to be incorrect. So now we're going to use the graph to find an estimate for the median height of a plant. So in total, 
we know that we had 80 plants. We know that the median is halfway. And that gives us 40. So that means that on our graph here, and you should use a ruler for this, we're going to read across from 40 until we hit our graph. Then we're going to read down and we're going to read the value off the bottom. So the median height of the gra of the uh, plants, sorry, is going to be 32 centimetres. Next, we're asked to use the graph to find the interquartile range. So that means that we need to find the lower quartile. Well, if 40 is halfway, that means that then, just change that colour so they look different. Uh, 20 is going to be our lower quartile, so reading across from 20. And then down once we hit our line, gives us 28. For our upper quartile, that means that we're going to read across from 60. So again, using your ruler, read across from 60 and then down. And that gives us 38. Which means that our interquartile range is going to be 38 minus 28, which gives us 10 centimetres. Now, for any of these readings, if you are asked to read them off in the exam, it won't be, uh, there will be a correct answer, but there will also be a range of answers that you are allowed to give it between, which will allow for certain variations in your graph. Usually it's about one or two points above and below what the actual median and quartiles are. So now we're looking to use our graph to estimate how many plants are greater than 45 centimetres. So this is different to before because last time we were reading off from the cumulative frequency to find the heights. This time we're going to read off the heights to find how many there are. So 45 centimetres, we're going to read up to our cumulative frequency graph. Once we hit the line, we're going to read across. And we're wanting to know how many plants have a height greater than 45. Well, less than 45, there were 72, because I can read off there that that value is 72. Which means that above that, greater than that height, we have eight plants left. That means that the answer to part D would be eight plants. Hopefully most of that you have seen before at GCSE. However, percentiles is probably new to you. So when we're asked to find the 10th percentile, remember that we're going up, we're wanting 10% to be below the value that we read off. We have 80 in total, so 80 times 0.1 gives us 8, which means that we are going to read across from 8. So we're reading across from 8. Once we hit our line, we're reading down. So that gives us 21 centimetres. For the 90th percentile, we would have 8 times 0 0.9 which gives us 72 and you can see here 72 I've already read across from that and down that was when I was looking at seven at 45 centimeters so that means that my 90th percentile is 45 centimeters for the 95th percentile we'll do 80 times 0.95 which gives us 76. Again, you can use your calculator to find these values. So we're going to read across from 76 to our line. Then we're going to read down. Oops. Sorry, 
need to scroll down a bit so I can see the values on the bottom. So reading down from R76. It's actually ended up being halfway between values, so it looks like it's 48.5 off my graph. And that's very important that you use your graph to read off the values. Okay? If you don't use your graph to read off the values, you won't get the marks in the exam if you just try and make them up. So you need to make sure that you use your graph correctly to read off the values. I'd now like you to try the now you try question. Again, it's got the same mistake on it as before for the cumulative frequency graph. These this time should all start at 10 because the first interval here starts at 10. So hopefully you've paused the video now and you've given the now you try a go. For our cumulative frequencies, we should have 5, 14, 22, 27 and 30. This time in the question, it didn't tell us how many there were. However, if you added 5, 9, 8, 5 and 3 together, you should end up with 30. And then plotting it on our cumulative frequency graph, we end up with a graph like this. Now, obviously, this isn't as perfect an S as we had on the uh, example, but bearing in mind that now the exam question is going to be using real life data, it is likely that our cumulative frequency graphs aren't going to look perfect. They may look a bit misshapen like this one does here. So you can see here that I've added on lines to read off the median, the lower quartile and the upper quartile to answer the part C. So for the median, because we have 30 in total, again, remember, you won't always be going all the way up to the top of your cumulative frequency. Sometimes there may be extra room above. So always make sure you read off where your actual cumulative frequency goes up to. Half of 30 is 15, which gave me 31 minutes. Remember to use your graph to read off the value and it should be roughly about 31 minutes. For the lower quartile, again, 30 divided by 4 gives us 7.5. So reading across and down from 7.5 gave us 22. 3 times 7.5 gives us 22.5. So reading across from 22.5 and down gave us 46. And 46 minus 22 gave us 24. For the next question, we're asked uh, how many nights you watch TV for longer than 45 minutes. If we read it off our graph here, we end up with 22 being below. And that's a really good reading off because if we go back to our table here, we can see that 22 is uh, 45 minutes. So that tells me that I've read it off my graph correctly. However, we wanted longer than that. So that would give us 8 because 30 minus 22 gives us 8. And that's going to be times as in occasions. Next, reading off the percentiles, we're going to have 30 times 0 0.15, which gives us 4.5. So we need to read across from 4.5. And we can see here, reading across from 4.5 and down gave us 20. Remembering that this time, because we're talking about percentiles, it is less than. So that gave us 20 minutes. Oops, sorry. It wasn't 20, was it? 19 minutes, sorry. Always try and double check, especially if the question goes over to the next page. For the next one, we're going to have 30 times 0 0.4, which gives us 12. So we need to read across from 12. And on my graph, you can see here that that ends up giving me 27. So that means that the 40th percentile was 27 minutes. And lastly, for the 80th percent 85th percentile, we'll have 30 times 0.85 which gives us 25.5. So then reading that off our graph, reading across from 25.5 and down, that gives us 53 minutes. So that one was 53 minutes. 
quite a lot of the times when you get a cumulative frequency question, it will be linked to a box plot. Remembering that because we can read off the median, lower quartile and upper quartile, as well as the minimum and maximum values, we could easily use the information that we get from a cumulative frequency graph to draw a box plot. And usually that is what we are doing with graphs. We are trying to interpret the data from them. It's not necessarily going to be that we have to draw the graphs. Thank you very much for listening.